I'm just gonna take a big bite and then. Should we film that? The, the yeah. Bite, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, that is the money shot. Yeah. Hi, I'm Rick and welcome back to another episode of Sweet Heat and I'm really excited because we're making breakfast sandwiches. One of the things that I miss about New York, certainly not the two feet of snow that's currently on the ground, but there's a really amazing bodega right near my house and when I'm really tired or really hungry or I just feel like I need to you know, comfort myself with a really amazing drippy cheese, egg, bacon, sausage sandwich. I just go to the bodega, I order it. It's loaded with all the things that I really love and it's super easy and it's cheap and it makes me feel really good. So that's what I'm gonna make, but I'm gonna make the sweet heat version. The sweet in this dish is gonna come from the breakfast sausage. So I'm gonna make a really easy breakfast sausage, but then I'm gonna make a really incredibly spicy tomato-based salsa to go with it. And of course, it's gonna have lots of cheese. I'm gonna use brioche rolls and toast it with a lot of butter. So it's gonna be very, very super indulgent. I know the last couple of episodes have been a little bit on the light side, so we're just gonna like play up the porky buttery goodness in this episode. And and as always, if you like me, if you like this recipe, if you want to see more, make sure you like and subscribe and you will be notified as soon as there's another Sweet Heat episode. Okay, so the ingredients for this recipe are actually pretty simple. The sausage I know sounds a little bit complicated, but I'm using just straight up grocery store ground pork. I looked for pork that was not lean. So the reason why sausage, good sausage, is so incredibly delicious is because of the fat. Sausage generally has at least 25% fat in it. The fat not only adds flavor, but it also helps with the texture, it also helps with the moisture. So this sausage, or this ground pork, is probably about 25, closer to 30%. It's actually pretty pink, and there's a lot of, of fat in there. You can see little chunks of white, and that's exactly what I want. If you use a really lean uh, product for this, what'll end up happening is you'll melt all the fat very, very quickly as it cooks, and then you'll just start to lose the juice. And so when you actually taste the sausage, it's just gonna read really dry and have like a very unpleasant texture. So you really, really want fat in this dish. But if you can't find ground pork that has a higher fat content, I have a little bit of a hack for you. I'm gonna add some lard to this and that will actually help with the moisture, help with the flavor, help with the unctuousness, which I also really love. And because it's sweet heat, there is sweet. And so today I'm, I'm actually not gonna use piloncillo. I really just want like a little bit of caramel and a little bit of sweetness. And so I've got two tablespoons of muscovado sugar. And the salsa is actually pretty simple. It's a tomato, onion, garlic, and a little bit of water. The heat is gonna come from two different kinds of chilies. I'm using chili de arbol and I'm also using chili morita. The moritas are dried and smoked uh, jalapenos. And the chili de arbol are very similar to a, a Thai chili or an Asian style chili. They're really, really hot. We're just gonna put that to a boil and then we'll puree it afterwards. So, I have my beautiful pork. To this, I'm going to put in some herbs. I'm gonna use one teaspoon of thyme and rosemary. And if you don't have fresh, don't worry about it. You can use dry. Whenever I use a dry in place of fresh, I always use half as much because you're concentrating the flavor, you're evaporating the water. Um, they're more intense normally if they're fresh, <laughs> freshly dried. So you wanna use less of the, uh, the dried herbs. And then, I'm just gonna go ahead and chop them all together. Okay, and the herbs just go straight in. So I'm gonna use some double garlic. What that means is I'm gonna use fresh garlic and I'm also going to use garlic powder. To me, they're almost two completely different ingredients altogether. Fresh garlic adds a little bit more heat but then there's something really interesting about dried garlic because it adds, it's almost like this nutty note flavor. You lose the heat, but you've concentrated like a lot of the oils and you've got a slight umami uh, thing going. There's a little bit of funkiness. There's a little bit of, of nuttiness to it. And to this, I'm going to finely grate this. Okay, garlic goes in and now, Sweet, 
I have two tablespoons of sugar, one teaspoon of garlic powder, quarter teaspoon of dried chili de arbol, because I want a little heat in there. I was debating whether or not to put this, um, and in the end, I was like, you know what? I, I need a little bit of heat in there. I'm also using allspice because I love allspice. It'll play really well with the herbs. It'll add a little bit of sweetness to, uh, to the sausage. It'll play nicely with the sugar. And then I'm adding a teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. Okay, so I'm going to mix all this in, but if you found really lean meat or uh, if you have really fatty meat and you just wanna be a little extra like me, then you can add a little bit of lard. If you can't find lard, you can use schmaltz, uh, you can use melted butter. You know, the other thing that I do as well for meatballs and uh, meatloaf is I actually use heavy cream. If you didn't wanna use lard, you could actually just put a couple of tablespoons of heavy cream in there. It's not gonna add a lot of dairy flavor. What it's gonna do is just help bind everything together. And then I'm just gonna get in here with my hands because it's fun. So what happens the more that you play around with your meat or if you were stirring it or if you were putting it, if you were making a big batch and you put it in a mixer, it's sort of like bread. The protein strands contract and the, the meat will actually start sticking to itself. And that's why you have the texture of sausage. When you put it into a casing, you can actually slice it because the meat holds itself together. If you treated this really gingerly like you would a meatball, for example, then if you put it in a casing, it would just fall apart nothing uh you're not you're not creating any any binding element in this so i want to actually get in there and keep going until it feels a little bit sticky and it holds its shape um, so i forgot salt <laughs> probably the most important ingredient so i'm going to add one and a half teaspoons about six grams of kosher salt and then i'm going to go back in there and mix it up again okay that uh, looks really good. So one of the things that's actually really important when you're making sausage is you need to let the, the meat rest so that all of those flavors can kind of meld and also so that the salt can actually melt. As the sausage sits in the refrigerator, the flavors are just gonna get more and more intense and more delicious. Okay, so now we're gonna make the salsa uh, the heat part of the dish. and. As always, I don't like complicated salsas, and I don't even know that there are many complicated ones. I mean, maybe there are, but um, this one is super easy. Um, we're basically just going to roughly chop up some veg. Now for the heat. So I have chili morita and I have chili de arbol. They are both very hot. I took the stems off these morita and those just get thrown in. So for these, I am gonna take the seeds out because these are really, really super spicy. Now, that goes into a little pot. I'm putting a teaspoon and a half, six grams of kosher salt. We'll put this back on the stove, add half a cup of water, cover it and bring it to a boil reduced to a simmer. And in about 15 minutes, all the veg and all the chilies will be really nice and hot. And then we'll blend it up. I'm gonna give it one mix, one final mix, just to make sure that everything's nicely blended. And I'm just gonna gently roll it out. I'm gonna press it in my hand because if I push it into the sheet tray, it's gonna get stuck and that looks really good. Okay, and they're gonna shrink as well. So you wanna make sure that you make it maybe slightly larger than your bun or at least as large as your bun and it'll contract as it cooks. Oh, it smells so good and you can see the little flecks of, of herbs in there. It's like, that's probably gonna look really gross, but whatever, <laughs> it makes me happy. <laughs> So the salsa has been cooking for about 15 minutes. I turned it off and let it sit for about 10 just to make sure that all the chilies are nice and soft. Now, all I'm gonna do is dump everything into the blender. And we'll just 
start on low, increase it slowly. That's about as far as I'm going to take it. The first time I made it, I actually let it blend for about a minute, but this one is really good. Also really hot. I'm going to get a spoon so I can taste. Ooh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's really hot. <laughs> Like I said, the heat will kind of like mellow out as it sits. That is really good. I'm really happy with the consistency. All right, so that's done. We're gonna put this aside and we will start the sausage. All right, so I preheated my pan and in the recipe I said, you can use a little bit of olive oil. And actually, you know, since I have lard already, I'm gonna go ahead and just add some lard to this. So what I normally do when I fry sausage is I generally start pretty high just to kind of seal the bottom of the sausage. Uh, that'll prevent a lot of excess moisture loss. Um, it'll also help give you that nice little crispy edge. But then I reduce it down so that it cooks more slowly, kind of like medium, medium, low. I also don't want the sausage to dry out and I want the, the fat to render. One other thing that I see a lot of people do uh, both with sausage patties and also with hamburgers is they typically take a spatula and press down. It kind of hurts my heart when I see that because you'll notice like a lot of the juices start to expel and you'll start to sizzle around the edge and you'll see this puff of steam. That is juiciness that you want to leave in your burger or in the sausage. Don't do that. I'm the people that do that. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, <Sebastian>. <laughs> <laughs> some eggs, toast some bread, and breakfast is served. Okay, so the brioche is done, and now I'm gonna do the eggs. So, I don't normally put dairy in my eggs. Um, I know a lot of people do. Some people put cream, some people put milk. I understand that they like, they add a creaminess, but I think if you just cook eggs properly, a little bit slowly, you keep it moving in the pan, they're gonna be really creamy and custardy and you won't need any extra dairy. Okay. I, I almost can't even talk. I'm like so hungry. And also like I'm obsessed with the toast on this brioche. It is so beautiful and so golden. I kind of don't want to put anything on it, but I will push my way through that. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just put some beautiful scrambled egg on here. Oh, so good, so steamy, so hot, yum. And then, I'm going to put my giant sausage, which actually the big, crazy big one is actually the perfect size for this. And I'm gonna put the salsa, it's gonna drip everywhere, but that's fine. I'm gonna put it on the bread. So there's at least a chance that it will absorb and won't drip all over me and the plate and everywhere. All right, put the lid on. And that is my sweet heat sausage, egg, and cheese sandwich. Mm -hmm. I was just saying how every time I do this, I feel like my eyes roll back in my head and I'm just like, whatever. Well, it's happening again. There's so many things happening. For such a simple sandwich, like you get the butteriness and a little crunch from the brioche. Also the brioche is a little sweet. And then you get into the sausage, which is also sweet and really savory. I can taste the herbs. And then all of a sudden the, uh, the sausage just comes in and just like kind of kicks you in the head and wakes you up. It's so good. And the eggs are like really, really creamy and custardy. Just how I like them. I'm gonna go back in again for research purposes. Mm. I don't even know what to say for my outro other than I just want to finish this sandwich. I'm really excited for you to make this. It's super easy. 
You don't have to like do anything special, no casings, no special equipment, no grind your own meat. Make sure you stay tuned because next month I'm probably gonna be making a glazy, sticky, ribby thing. No promises, but stick around and like and subscribe so you will be notified as soon as there's another Sweet Heat video. I want a third bite. This is just me eating the whole thing on camera. Hmm. <laughs>